Welcome to this video which is blocking a pillbox hat method 2 with a dome top. This is so that if you make quite a small hat the head won't deform the top of the hat. If it was a flat pillbox it would. So we're going to make a dome top. And I'm going to use my fruit bowl that I've used in other videos on my channel. But you can use any round hat block or round bowl with a slight dome to it. So first of all I'm going to cover it with cling film to stop everything sticking. And I've decided for this hat I'm using some fat quarters of pure cotton material. Uh, and I've opted for a black and white. So I thought I'd have a bit of a difference top to the sides. So I'm going to use the very spotty one for the sides and this fabric for the top. So first of all I need to cut a circle, but it needs to be about one and a half inches bigger than the actual bowl. So I shall mark it out with a pencil, holding my pencil at an angle with my hand on top of the bowl. So go around about one and a half, it doesn't have to be exact, but about one and a half inches bigger. So I go all the way around with my pencil and then I shall cut that out. Once it's cut out, I'll also cut out the same circle of millinery buckram. Now I'm going to do a running thread just around the outside of the cotton fabric. This will help me fix it to the head and, and just give a better finish. I can sort of gather it up and hopefully won't have any pleats in the fabric. So you can see here I've gone all the way around with my needle and thread. Now I'm going to wet the buckram. It needs to be quite wet, soak up the water and become quite pliable. So spray quite a bit on it. You need to be able to stretch it. We're also going to spray the fabric. Two reasons. It's easier to stretch onto the block and also as it'll be wet it will stick to the starch in the buckram and I won't have to ha add any extra glue. So both of these are wet and it should be just starting to get pliable now. So I take my fruit bowl or your round hat block and stretch the buckram so it starts to become quite pliable and flexible and you can stretch it over the dome. There we are, that's looking good. So I'll put that in place. And then I put the fabric on top of that and smooth it all down and over. Try and get it as even as you can around the top. Again, stretching the wet fabric over, down over, over the buckram. And we're now going to pin all this in place. And as normal, we will do the four compass points first and then carry on pinning all the way around until it's all stretched into place and secure. down as you push your pins in so that they're nice it pulls the fabric and avoids any pleats and things so pin all the way around and then we're going to set that aside 
to dry, probably overnight, unless we have some very nice warm weather, which would be good. So there it is, all pinned in place. Now we're going to tackle the side. I don't want a very deep um, edge to the hat, so I've cut a strip of uh, millinery buckram, cut off any salve edges, cut one long edge so that it's nice and straight, and also check that you've got roughly the right size for what you want with a little bit over. So I'm using a rotary cutter here just because it's nice and quick and easy and you get a nice straight line. So I'm going to cut the top edge into a nice straight edge. I'm doing this by eye, but I do advise actually that you, you measure things and cut them. But now I'm going to make this about three inches so I'm going to measure across three inches and I'm going to mark that with a pencil and then again, cut a nice straight edge. So here's our, here's our piece where I'm just marking, ready to cut. So mark it with a pencil, and cut along. Now because I want the top edge to be a nice sort of rounded edge, as opposed to a jaggedy edge where I've just cut it, I'm now going to mark a quarter of an inch approximately all the way along and I'm going to fold that over. So following your pencil line just fold it over on that line so that it gives me a smoother edge there. And you can see there, I'm going to make a circle of it. Actually, I'm going to use my cake tin that I used before. But first off, I need to cut a strip of fabric to cover that. And I'm using this fabric here. Now, I want to cut it on the bias because <clears throat> I want to have it to have a little bit of stretch. So I'm going to fold my piece of fabric over into two triangles. And then I'm going to mark out roughly what I need. What I've, I've made it much too wide, actually, but it doesn't matter. I've, I've made it about three inches when I don't need to make it that big. But um, anyway, mark a, a bias strip and then cut that so that you've got a nice bias piece of fabric. There we are. Right, I'm taking my cake tin that I had before. I don't need my circle to be an exact uh, size at the moment. I just want it to be a circle. So I'm wetting again my um, buckram, getting it all damp, and I'm going to wrap it around the tin. And I'm actually going to use the fabric to hold it in place. So I'm going to wet the fabric just to help that stretch around as well. So there we have our buckram. Now put it on the tin with your folded edge down against the tin. Put it round, put your fabric round it because your fabric will actually just hold the buckram in place and then just put some pins on it to keep it all in place while it dries. There we are. And again, you put this to one side and let it dry completely. Now, 
Now that our top is dry, I shall take out all the pins and take it off the block. And what I've done here is I've trimmed all the way around the edge so I haven't got any jaggedy nasty edges. Now my the uh, fabric and buckram on my tin are dry, I shall just peel the fabric off. I don't need that for the minute. Put that to one side. And then I'll peel the buckram off. And as you can see, it is a nice sort of curved shape. So that's going to be going around the hat. Now I need to fold over the bottom, what will be the bottom edge. I know I've got it the wrong way around here. But what will be the bottom edge where the wire is going to go. So again, mark about a quarter of an inch. I've marked with a pen here. And fold it over. And then I'm going to put my brim reed in it. It can be wire or brim reed. It's just I prefer to use brim reed. So it's roughly the right size. So fold over where you think it's going to fit. Let's put a clip to keep it there for the minute. And I'm going to put wire in the edge that we've just folded over. Once the brim reads inside, I've stitched it down into place. I did use the sewing machine for that and just used a zigzag. Now I'm uh, ironing out flat a st wide strip of bias binding. And I'm going to be putting that around the wired edge. Again, twofold reason. One to give it a nice neat edge and one so that we've got something to sew the fabric to. Otherwise, we wouldn't have anything to sew the fabric to. So just pull it slightly as you ease it round so you get a nice finish. Make sure it's equidistant either side. And again, stitch in place. That's been hand stitched with a back stitch. So I'm going to iron my piece of fabric flat. And I'm going to fold over a narrow, narrower edge onto the edge where we've had our wire and our bias binding. So fold over, <coughs> clip or pin all the way around. Again, it's handy if you've got a fabric that's got a pattern that you can see where a straight line is. So uh, this one's coming quite handy for that. And of course, when you get to the edge, the end rather, trim, fold, and clip into place. Pull the fabric quite tight when you're putting it on here. Then you, it'll look very smooth. Now I've stitched inside to the bias binding. So the fabric is now attached. I did cut the fabric too wide in the first place, so I'm just chopping off about an inch and a half here. A bit wasteful, but I'm sure I'll use that scrap for something. Nothing ever goes to waste in my room. Now I'm running my favourite glue, Fabri-Tac. I'm just running a little bit of Fabri-Tac around the inside to fold over this edge and stick it down because I won't have room for clips when I put it onto the rest of the hat. So some Fabri-Tac, don't have to go mad, just enough. And then pull and stretch and glue down. And again, I'm keeping in place with some wonder clips. So it'll all be pressed down. And then that will be set aside for only about five minutes. It dries very quickly. Um, until it's uh, stuck. Now 
So there we are. Put that to one side. Now once it is glued and stuck, we're going to put the rest of the hat with it. Now it's a bit fiddly because you've got this circle shape, but push it into the hat either from the bottom or the top and try and get it fairly even all the way around. Now it will take a long while to do this, so I'm not going to show you forever, but we need to pin it in place. So take some pins and pin. Again, do the four compass points first and then pin in place. We're then going to stitch, oh, I was going to say, if you haven't made the top quite big enough or you've made the side too big, you can gently steam the top again and just stretch it out a little bit. So this one now needs stitching. You want tiny, teeny, tiny stitches. They don't have to be very close together. They can be half an inch apart, but you don't really want to see them and you want to stitch all the way through all parts of the hat which is quite hard, so you'll see I'm using pliers to pull the needle through. But once it's all stitched in place and you can't see that you're stitching, then you'll need to put uh, your lining in. Now I'm not going to describe how to do the lining because um, I show that in other videos. And I'm just stitching in a hat elastic here you'll see some quite fine hat elastic check that you've got it the right size for your head so I just try it on there and check and yes I've got plenty so uh, tie a knot and then check it again when you've tied the knot so so that you can adjust if needs be so so the hat elastic's in, the lining is in, and as I say, that is in another video. And then you sew the Peter Shim in. And then your hat is finished and you can decorate as you like. I hope you've enjoyed this video and there are lots more to come, especially some with some hacks, tips and tricks of the trade. Thank you.